Welcome to day 28 of the Course in Mastery. Today, Tom Wood is going to examine strategies for evaluating opportunities, as well as how to be ready for them when they present themselves. Then, Jim Britt is going to discuss the internal motivations that surround any opportunity. Here's Tom. Today we're going to talk about evaluating financial opportunities. Are you ready? Seriously, are you ready? If the right opportunity fell in your lap today, are you ready to take advantage of it? If you truly want to create wealth, you have to be ready if the financial opportunity comes. I'm going to teach you two things today. One, how to get ready, and two, how to evaluate an opportunity when it comes. Here's my simple checklist for being ready to evaluate any opportunity that comes your way. Number one, what do you want? There are so many ways to make money, it boggles the mind. Ice cream sales, ice sales, I care. Blue chip stocks, blue chips, the blues. French horns, car horns, shoe horns, popsicles, pop tarts, pop goes the weasel, that popper in pop goes the weasel that makes the pop goes the weasel thing go pop. Stop thinking that you have to find something that makes money. You can make money in anything. What you need to find is what you love to do. Number two, you have to ask yourself the question, how much time do I have? You can start part time or full time, but be honest about that time that you have. Remember, there are other things that happen in your life. And starting a business does take time. It's not something you can do sometime. You can do it part time or full time, but never sometime. Number three, ask yourself, how much money do I have? You can start a business for a million dollars, or you can start a business for as little as $500. Remember that how much money you have does not necessarily equate to how much money you will make. But don't try starting a $50,000 business if all you've got is $5,000. Be honest with yourself, how much money do I have? Okay, now you're ready. You know what you like, you know how much time you have, and you know how much money you have. When the opportunity comes, you'll know who you are and whether that opportunity is right for you. What you now have to decide, is this a good opportunity? Here's my simple checklist for evaluating any opportunity. Number one, is there the possibility of residual income. Now you don't have to have residual income, but if you don't, that's just a job. For me, I want a business. I want something I can personally just walk away from. If that's something you want, you need to look clearly and honestly at this business that you're looking at. Will you eventually be able to walk away? Number two, has the opportunity you are evaluating been viable for more than one year? Big companies wait until smaller companies build an industry and once there's one or two or three companies that survive the beginning of that industry then they go and buy out one of those companies to reduce their risk. You can do the same thing. You don't have to be the pioneer who gets the arrow in the back. You can come in when the opportunity is proven before it becomes critical mass and everybody's heard about it. The key in opportunities is timing. Number three do you believe in the product, the vision, and the mission of this opportunity? If you don't, it's a waste of time. By my house, there's a pizza joint that's owned by a couple. They are big, happy people. And they say, hey, would you want to be eating pizza from a couple that's skinny? No, you want to buy pizza from big, heavy people, they say. They are passionate about pizza. Now, that's not the business I would be in, but that's the business they're in, and they love it. You must love it because it's going to be a lot of work, a lot of sweat, and a lot of tears. Find your passion and know that this is what you're going to be doing. Number four, does the business matter? Does it make a difference in the world? Now this may seem a little odd, but no business survives if it doesn't make a difference. And You have to decide, does this make a difference that I can be a part of? It's going to get hard. I'm telling you, I don't know anybody who started a business and everything worked great. When it gets hard, you're going to have to know that what you do matters so you can stick it out and make it before you start to create that financial wealth everybody wants. Okay, that's it. Those are the four points that I use to evaluate an opportunity. Number one is the residual income. Number two, has it been in business for a year? Number three, do I love it? Number four, does it matter? If you can say yes to these, you're on your way to successful business. That's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Jim Britt, who went from picking cotton and a, and a factory job. Thanks, Tom. 
Jim Britt, who went from picking cotton and a factory job to financial independence at the age of 29, has served as an executive on several projects for people including Jim Rohn, Dr. Dennis Waitley, and Dr. Maxwell Maltz. In this clip, he takes evaluating an opportunity to the next level by encouraging you to examine your internal motivations. Here's Jim. So I want to share with you a few of the discoveries. And again, my title of my talk is Vision Becomes Reality. I want to talk about vision and reality because that's two important aspects of success and happiness. And I remember back a lot of those books I read would tell you how to do things, how to get things in your life, how to be successful, how to earn money, how to make sales, all of those things. And all of those are great skills and tools to be able to utilize. But you know, I had a big home on top of a hill, I had cars, I had money in the bank, and I was in a divorce. And my life was kind of falling apart. So let me give you in the next three minutes how to clarify what you want, and then we'll get on to the real uh, part of what we're going to talk about, which is reality. What stops you? What holds you back? Think of something right now that you want. Maybe it's success. Maybe it's a new car. Maybe it's a new home. Maybe it's a more fulfilling relationship. Maybe it's money in the bank. Maybe it's security. Whatever. Think of what you want. And let me just use an example. Let's say that I wanted to have a chauffeur-driven limousine. Now, I don't, but let's say that I do. So I would ask myself to clarify it, to get to the true essence of what I want and why I want it. I would ask myself, why do I want this limousine? And the answer comes back, well, because I'd look good in it. And I would, wouldn't I? <laughs> what color do you think? Black, white? <laughs> so I'd say, well, why do you want to look good, Jim Britt? Said, well, I want to look good because um, I want people to notice me. Oh, you want to be noticed. Why do you want to be noticed? Well, I want to be noticed because um, I want more friends in my life. Oh, you want more friends. So why do you want more friends? I want more friends because I want more love in my life. And why do you want more love in your life? Well, you know, when I was a little baby, I can remember my mother picking me up in her arms and kissing me and hugging me and tucking me in at night. I remember the feeling of that. And that's what I would like to have more of in my life, which is a long way from a chauffeur-driven limousine. Would you agree? You see what we do to ourselves? It's not that we shouldn't have all of those things. It's clarifying why we want it. Because when you get to the pure essence of what you want, you begin to attract it because it's pure of the heart. You know exactly what it is and why. Not just what, but why. 